Just a few more days till the Alberta election. The polls look grim, but there are undecideds. And of course, when people toy with a new party, especially a radical party like the NDP, they may pull back at the last minute. People obviously want change. I don't blame them. Jim Prentice has been a disaster ideologically. He has brought in literally the worst budget in Alberta history. But how did this all happen? I mean, if you just look back six months, Jim Prentice was in a solid first place in a, and he was, I'm not going to say he was right wing, but he was centrist. The strong Wild Rose opposition was in a strong second place. And the NDP and the Liberals and the Alberta party were distant fringe parties. How did it all go so wrong so quickly? Well, the answer is obvious. The defection of Danielle Smith into the Prentice government is what started it all, because that led to two things. Removing the only truly conservative opposition uh, from the Alberta political scene gave Jim Prentice the ability to ram through his atrocious, big spending, big taxing, big deficit budget. That's the only way it could have happened. Had he tried to bring in that budget, even with his majority, he would have faced an enormous pushback from a strong, credible Wild Rose opposition. I don't think that he would have gone to an early election. I don't think he would have brought in such an atrocious budget. And more importantly, I don't think that can, Albertans would have said, you pulled a fast one. You tried to pull a fast one. You tried to destroy your own opposition through some secret deal instead of through an election. I think that was the seed of it. I don't think I'm saying anything particularly uh, adventurous. I think that's fairly conventional wisdom. So I blame Jim Prentice for what's about to happen. I, I'm sure he blames himself if he were candid. I blame Danielle Smith for throwing in the towel on a promising career. Frankly, she could and should be the next Premier of Alberta had she shown some loyalty to her own ideology and the 440,000 Albertans who voted to put her there. She was just impatient, yet she hadn't been opposition leader for even three years. But I blame one more person because it was a shock to me to find out that there was a midwife to this secret dirty deal. It was my old friend Preston Manning. He counseled the Wild Rose MLAs to defect. He counseled them to destroy not only their own party, but the public institution of the office of the leader of the opposition, and to defect to the government, even though the government already had a majority. Even though Jim Prentice could have passed any budget through the legal instruments he had, Preston Manning secretly told the Wild Rose to abandon. He tried to destroy the Conservatives. Obviously, Jim Prentice is to blame. Obviously, Danielle Smith made her own decisions. But Preston Manning was the one whispering in their ears, which is so ironic given that his institute is called the Manning Center for Building Democracy. He helped destroy democracy, and it looks like he may have destroyed Alberta's conservative nature. Now, I, I went back to a Globe and Mail article that Preston Manning published right after this secret deal was done. And I want to read to you from Manning's proud crowing about the deal. By the way, he does not disclose his own secret role in midwifing the deal, which I think is rather deceptive. But let me read to you from what Preston Manning wrote so proudly in the Globe and Mail that, that uh, first appeared on Thursday night. December 18th, right after the dirty deal was done. I'm just going to read you a few excerpts from, from it. He said, from the standpoint of the Alberta public, the most important aspect of this development is the willingness of the government to commit to a multi-year fiscal plan to balance the budget and limit operational cost increases. So Preston Manning said, ta-da, I'm so proud. The big breakthrough here is that Jim Prentice has promised to balance the budget. But of course, he didn't. We have the largest deficit in Alberta history. Of course, if Jim Prentice wanted to balance the budget, he could have done so on his own. He had a majority government, but he chose to deceive and trick and bring in a terrible budget because why not? He had destroyed his opposition with Preston Manning's help. Let me continue reading from Preston's op-ed in the Globe and Mail. This secret deal, said Manning, commits Alberta's new premier to moving his government onto fiscally responsible ground. <laughs> what a joke. It's the worst overspending budget ever. Let me read some more from Preston Manning. 
It also allows Wild Rose to deliver on the fiscal responsibility plank in its platform. Yeah, no, because of course the Wild Rose party was decimated. The Wild Rosers are still standing firm for a smaller government, but Danielle Smith and the other defectors enabled the worst budget in Alberta history. Preston Manning's political antenna really are that bad. Let me keep reading because it's just incredible. It's like a time warp. You wouldn't imagine this was written just four months ago, but it is. Uh, Preston, of course, is the one who uh, talks a lot about democracy. It's right there in the name of his Manning Center for Building Democracy, and yet he midwifed this secret deal. Let me read you what he says about that, again, not disclosing his own role. He said in the Globe and Mail last December, the Wadros can legitimately argue that if ever there was a time for Albertans, including conservatives of every stripe, to pull together, now is the time. What does that mean to pull together? The public elected an official opposition. Building in division and opposition is an important part of our political system. We don't want to pull together. We don't want to have a one party state. We don't want even majority governments to be able to ram everything through. It is important to us that we don't pull together, that we have loyal opponents to the government, loyal to the country, loyal to the province, but avid and partisan and quarrelsome with the government just to hold them to account. Preston Manning thinks that building democracy means eliminating opposition, but look what that led to. Let me read some more. He says, will the agreement pass the democratic test? Only time will tell. Yeah, well, Preston, it wasn't democratic at all. You were the one who encouraged them to do a secret deal without any public notice or consent. And you're right, though. Time will tell. We can see right now how disgusted Albertans are with the secret deal that you tried to foist on them. Let me read some more. Some conservatives will rightly worry that the only option open to those Albertans looking for an alternative to the government will be some left-of-center party. And Manning laughs at this possibility. Historically in Alberta, it is parties offering right-of-center alternatives that have done better in opposition than those offering left-of-center solutions. And he laughs at the NDP and the Liberals. Who's laughing now, Preston? People are so disgusted with this secret deal that you midwife that they are actually considering voting for the NDP. According to latest polls, 38 or 39 percent of Albertans are willing to hold their nose and vote NDP rather than take this undemocratic deal you helped cook up. Who's mocking whom now? Who has a better grasp of Alberta now? But the best part of Preston Manning's self-congratulatory op-ed last, last uh, December in the Globe was this final paragraph, where he toots his own horn at being an awesome, super backroom strategist. Get this, he says, as one who has spent many years trying to achieve political realignment among reformers and conservatives at the federal level, I know how difficult a task this is. Well, see, that's the thing. Preston Manning never won. Preston Manning actually, through the Reform Party splitting away from the conservatives, ensured 10 years of liberal rule. It was only once Stephen Harper came along to unite the right did the Conservatives win. Now, I was part of Preston Manning's Reform Party Brigade because I believed that he was a true Conservative and that the Brian Mulroney Conservatives and the Kim Campbell Conservatives were unsalvageable. I see now that while we were purist, we only lost and we gave the Liberals a win. Preston Manning is loved now by the media that used to hate him because he's a perfect Conservative in their mind. Someone who always gets it wrong and always loses, but loses with a smile. His perfect track record federally of losing is now being grafted onto Alberta provincially. Now, I sent my ideas to Preston Manning, my old boss, and I said, Preston, I'm gonna be very critical of you. I'd like you to come on and answer and explain what you think. Do you think this was a massive failure? Do you take any responsibility for it? Don't you see how this was both undemocratic and unconservative? He sent me this reply, which I'll read to you. He said, through his assistants, quote, Preston regrets that you continue to attack persons rather than positions, but realizes that this is your style and unlikely to change. Well, Preston, I'm not attacking you personally. I'm not doing what the liberals do, making fun of your squawky voice or your haircut or your style or your bad French. I'm not attacking your personal traits. I'm attacking your exceedingly bad judgment. 
I'm attacking your unconservative decision to support a government that brought in the biggest spending, biggest deficit, biggest tax hike budget in Alberta history. I'm not attacking you personally, Preston. I'm attacking you for undermining democracy and for helping put together a secret deal that looks like it may give Alberta to the NDP. Preston, you can hide from the cameras, but I'm afraid you can't hide from your legacy. You're a loser federally, and it looks like you might, might just bring that losing streak to the most conservative par, uh, province in Canada. Shame on you, sir. For the Rebel Media, I'm Ezra Levance.